Palm Recognition Editorial Team has covered AUSC 2019 Association of United States Army exhibition that was held in Washington DC in October. One of the main topics at the edition 2019 of AUSA is unmanned ground vehicles. Many companies have presented new generation of robotic systems to respond to a new program of US Army. The US Army has launched a new program to purchase a new family of UGV unmanned ground vehicle under the Robotic Combat Vehicle RCV program that includes the RCV light that can be transportable by rotary wing aircraft, the RCV medium that can be fit in a cargo hold of C-130 Hercules military transport aircraft and the RCV EV that can be fitted in the cargo hold of C-17 Globemaster. The Robotic Combat Vehicle Light Program is part of the Army Futures Command Next Generation Combat Vehicle. The goal of this program is to provide US soldiers of mechanized infantry units and armor units with combat robot vehicles that extend their reach and effectiveness of the battlefield. The US Army expects to have prototypes of the RCVL as well as the RCVM, the Robotic Combat Vehicle Medium, in full testing in 2020. Two of each design will be selected to perform field trial tests with the goal of operational deployment by 2028. So my name is John Hasty. I'm a director of product with Kinetic North America. And the idea of this program is to provide a light reconnaissance robotic platform for use in combat environments. So our system here, the EMAV platform, is uh, developed in conjunction with Pratt & Miller Defense. So we've uh, partnered exclusively on this program to provide a system that is non-developmental and, and ready for experimentation today. The differentiator for our system is that it is developed from the ground up as a robotic platform and it's developed specifically to meet the speeds and mobility requirements of an armored brigade combat team as opposed to an infantry squad. So it meets the speed requirements, the cross-train mo mobility. Um, to, to keep up with an ABCT. Um, and then the system also has all the open system architecture to integrate the vehicle autonomy from the government and to integrate all the various capabilities from cameras, video, and command and control. The requirement has a, a number of payloads that they've requested. Um, and what we're demonstrating here is, is some of those core payloads that they've identified as being a minimum requirement. So weapon system being one, tethered UAS being another system. So uh, the remote weapon station here is a, is a Crows J. It's built by Kongsberg. It's the program of record system. And the government is looking to reuse those systems they already have in inventory. So we are, we are using one here on our system, but the program would provide it as government furnished equipment. My name is Jim Miller. I'm the business development director for our combat vehicles business inside of BA Systems Inc. Uh, today we're showcasing a, a vehicle behind me that fits into the Army's next generation of combat vehicles programs, which is a very broad program that looks at what does the Army need in the future uh, on the battlefield. Uh, it's broken into a couple parts. One is a replacement for the infantry fighting vehicle. One is about a robotic combat vehicle. And what we've brought to the show to showcase is our robotic technology demonstrator, which uh, is our commitment to the robotic side of the next generation of combat vehicles. We've got this, uh, we've got a very great team that, that we've put together, um, and uh, we're really focused on demonstrating this advanced technology that's really going to give a leap ahead to the Army. And so teaming with others is important to do that. The, the key thing we're really trying to do with this demonstrator is show how we take soldiers out of harm's way while increasing the lethality of Army units on the battlefield. So it's important for us to have this advanced technology demonstrator inside of uh, what we call the RTD uh, to get after that mission, to take care of our soldiers, increase lethality. So this vehicle is designed to be a rolling lab, which means we're going to change it, we're going to update it, we're going to put new technologies on it, uh, and the idea is to test them integrating, see what value we get from different integrations. And what we're finding out is the critical thing is really the integration. On this vehicle today, as we, that one we're showcasing today, has a current set of technologies that are available now that we've integrated on this vehicle as a starting point. And if I just start from the bottom up, we've got a composite rubber track on the vehicle. 
which does a couple of things for a robotic vehicle. One, makes it very quiet on the battlefield. It also increases the range of the vehicle. And because we don't have soldiers on the vehicle, there are no soldiers on this vehicle at all, uh, it simplifies the maintenance of the track because CRT goes forever without maintenance. So, and it also helps with logistics. It reduces the burden on fuel consumption and on the battery usage on this vehicle. The second thing is we got a hybrid electric drive on this vehicle. We took a hybrid electric drive that we put in civilian commuter buses, and thousands of buses already out there on the streets, uh, millions of miles of reliability, and we put it on this vehicle. Again, a uh, few reasons that's really beneficial. One is it's quiet, it will drive forever without logistics support, it doesn't need much fuel, and it can run on battery power and, and power all the sensors at really kind of a logistically simple low cost to the Army. And it makes it very exciting for that reason. Above that, we have you know five sensors on the outside of the vehicle. They're just camera-based sensors. You see, uh, you see over here on my left. There's all kinds of sensors on this vehicle. There's a you know a Raven APS system on the vehicle. There's a mast behind me to get elevation. There's a tethered uh, UAS that allows us to see from above. Uh, and what we've got on this vehicle is an ability to integrate all that information so it's a value back to the soldier in packages that can be transmitted back to the soldier. We also have, besides the UAS, we have a, a marsupial robot. This is a four-legged uh, robot, kind of looks like a dog, and the idea is it's carried on the vehicle. This can dismount itself, go check it out, report to the vehicle, which can report back to soldiers, and then remount itself on the vehicle uh, so the vehicle can continue forward. So these are the kind of the exciting things we've done already. And like I said, this is a rolling lab. Uh, we've got a lethality solution that's a 30 millimeter gun, uh, but there's lots of space up front for additional sensors on the sides of the turret for additional weapon systems, additional capabilities that you would expect to see on a battlefield. And so we're pretty excited about the capabilities we have here. Uh, the idea is to get out and test it, try new technologies, go again, see what we get out of it, and see what we can offer the Army. Again, it's all about getting soldiers out of harm's way while the Army gets more lethal on the battlefield. So really exciting program. My name is Florian Riesch. I work for American Rheinmetall Defense uh, I'm responsible for the business development activities for vehicle systems. And we are very happy to show the Army our approach for robotic combat vehicle light. Um, as you know, um, it's three different categories the Army is um, uh, investigating in. Uh, we have a light category, a medium and a heavy. Um, Rheinmetall uh, is very proud of presenting a solution for the, um, for the robotic combat vehicle light. And uh, as a platform, we have got the Combat Proven Weasel, um, which we will be fitting with the uh, Autonomous Intelligence Kit of the Mission Master UGV, which we see in the background, and I'm happy to guide you around there as well. The Weasel 2 initially was designed for the German Army for light infantry troops. Uh, it has been in service since the 1990s. Uh, about 200 vehicles are still in service in different uh, variants in the German Army, um, such as a reconnaissance uh, version, air defense, combat engineering, and a mortar carrier. So that version here that we're seeing um, is a man version. We wanted to show the basic platform that we're going to be using. Um, the, uh, the idea is to use the um, Wiesel Digital that we have already developed with and for the German Army. Um, that, ve that vehicle is already um, uh, fitted with a electronic um, backbone. It has got drive-by-wire steering, um, NATO generic vehicle architecture. It can already be remote controlled from the inside, in the, in the back of the vehicle, or from the outside. So it is already prepared for autonomy. We're gonna be using that Wiesel Digital and gonna be um, uh, fitting it out with the autonomous kit and the weapon control suit of the UGV Mission Master, um, which has got excellent autonomous capabilities, basically the best in class. Um, but the, we consider the platform of the Weasel as the more suitable for robotic combat vehicle light. Our robotic combat vehicle light, which we call the Weasel Wingman, will be equipped with a Cross-J weapon station. 
right now we show as an example for the integration the Rheinmetall Field Ranger weapon station. Um, but we are pretty flexible in what we want to integrate um, and uh, basically can add different features to the vehicle, such as a Tether drone, which will be one of the requirements for uh, RCV light. Um, I think what, what is interesting to point out and why we have chosen that vehicle is, um, as I just stated before, it is in service with the German army. It's combat proven. It has seen service in Kosovo and Afghanistan. A, sp a special version that is already remote controlled is uh, in service or was in service with the German army as a part of the route clearance package. So it was uh, fitted out with a ground penetrating radar. Um, and one of the key features of that vehicle is it's not only very mobile due to its tracks, um, it's also highly air transportable. So it fits into a CH-47, which is one of the requirements. You can transport it under slung, and at least that base version is also qualified air droppable. Based on how and how's deep knowledge of purpose-built ground vehicles, Team Ripso has designed the M5 for high speed and superior mobility in the most rugged terrains and weather. This fifth generation robotic combat vehicle platform combines scalable armor, suspension and drive options to meet a variety of mission demands. The team has invested upfront in key technologies to demonstrate that the Ripso M5 is mission ready to provide the US Army confident execution with uncompromising technology, including real-time situational awareness systems, remote weapon stations and terrain engagement systems. At AUSA 2019, the Ripso M5 was fitted with an MCT-30 turret designed by the Norwegian company Kongsberg, armed with a 30mm automatic cannon. According to Textron Systems, the Ripsom M5 can be equipped with other weapon systems, including the common remote weapon stations armed with Javelin missiles. <laughs>